welcome back to Martini Time with Logan Wells. This is part two. Um, I figure this is just like kind of meeting someplace over drinks, discussing business, right? So make yourself a martini or your drink of choice, whether it be a glass of wine, a beer. I'm only going to have one sip <laughs> so I can keep my wits about me. Okay, so we covered a lot of things in the last video on regards to bookings and doing business by phone calls, not just by emails and texts and a couple other uh, different subjects. But um, this time I want to talk about um, clubs and restaurants. And this is really for the fans or the lovers of music out there who like to go out and see live music. If you have a favorite group or favorite artist who is performing at a local club or a restaurant, that's just something that I want you to keep in mind. First of all, 95% of the places do not charge cover charges anymore. I don't know why that ever kind of went by the wayside because back when I was um, just at the getting to the age where I could uh, go to clubs and back in the day, in the 80s, it, you had to be 18 because they had the three two beer. <laughs> so we were allowed to go into the uh, adult clubs, but you couldn't order um, hard alcohol, hard liquor. You could only get the beer. Um, but anyway, that being said, we were always charged a $5 cover charge. Sometimes it was more depending on the place, how big the place was, and the band, and you know how popular they were, determined the cover charge. And part of that, or most of that, was actually going to pay the band. And also back then, a lot of the bands would work for the door. So that was their way with the cover charge of being sure that they were going to be paid for um, their time there that evening. And if they had a really great night, they got really great pay. If it was a crappy night, well, <laughs> better luck next time. So in a way, I think it's kind of neat to um, be assured of a fair amount for yourself um, to do the gigs without the cover charge. But here's the thing depending on sales of food and drink because that's how the clubs are paying for the entertainment if people are coming in and they're just ordering an iced tea and getting free refills all night or coffee um, or just you know ordering a, a, a small salad or sometimes nothing at all they're just ordering a water the club is not gonna make the money to pay the entertainment the money for the entertainment doesn't come out of a magical entertainment fund that's you know falls out of the tree somewhere it's from their sales so not only do they have their own overhead and what they have to pay their own employees um, then they have to have something left in the profit to pay the entertainment so if you like live music and you have favorite um, bands or artists then please um, patronize those places by going out to dinner there and um, you know have a couple of drinks um, if you're afraid about you know getting pulled over have a designated driver from your group or hire an uber that's pretty reasonable and you can go out and have a really fun evening and you don't have to worry about duis or anything like that so just something i wanted to uh bring up because a lot of people really they don't they don't just realize that it's kind of you know, you know business 101 you have to have profit in order to be able to pay for the extra things like entertainment also here's another thing that a lot of my fans and just the general public do not realize the clubs not only have the entertainment fee for the band or artists that they're paying they are also being charged by these music licensing groups and there's three big ones BMI ASCAP and CSAC these are music licensing companies that can keep track of who's having live music in their clubs now a lot of restaurants and even like buildings that are playing that elevator music they're already paying a uh, licensing fee just to have that okay um, but if you have live music there's a separate fee for that and their idea is that they are collecting the royalty fees for the songs that the songwriters and artists have recorded and they should be getting um, a percentage of every time their song is played well here's my thing with that that just doesn't make any sense to me they don't know what any given band on any given night is singing okay they don't know 
what songs or what artists or things that I'm covering. So how are you fairly compensating those artists or bands or recordings or you know the songwriters if you don't know what all these different bands and artists who are performing live music are performing? This is what I've heard. I've heard that it's really like the top 15 to 20 artists at any given time that are on top of the charts that are getting the majority of that money, which is kind of stupid if you think about it because those people are already making a crap ton of money off of their hit songs that they're doing right now. It's the little guys and the people who, you know, wrote those songs, you know, I'm thinking of guys back in the, the 40s and 50s and 60s and stuff that wrote those songs that aren't on the charts or aren't being played regularly all the time, but they're being sung a lot of all those popular tunes in the clubs and how are they getting properly compensated for it? So the whole thing doesn't even make sense to me. I think it's kind of stupid and I think it's just a way to, you know, just rape these, these businesses of money, um, you know, going in and bullying them. This is what I'm hearing from the club owners. Uh, let's say Joe Blowbar has uh, somebody come in, you know, for a couple months. I doubt if it would even be that long because these music licensing companies, I think they actually keep track of the advertisements in the newspaper. Um, they're able to find out what places are having entertainment and they will go in and say, oh, you're having live, enter uh, live entertainment uh, this week. And it's not only BMI, but they have to pay CSEC and ASCAP as well if all three come after them. Now, here's the craziest part. They charge by how many times per week you have entertainment, and they charge by the maximum seating capacity of that restaurant or club. Whatever the venue is, the maximum seating. So let's say um, there's a, a, a bar that has 150 seats, uh, and it could be in even separate rooms, but you have in your lounge area is where the, the artist is performing. They're not charging for those 25 to 30 seats that are in the lounge. They charge for the entire 150 seats, even though they're in a different room and they can't even hear the artist. The whole thing just doesn't make sense to me. It's just really, really irritating. And believe me, when I was in Nashville, when I was working on my record deals and so forth and recording down there, I got to see those offices and they're pretty plush. So that's where the dollars are going. Just saying. Um, it's, it's just really irritating because so many places will not even have live music um, that would normally be willing to because they're bullied by these people and exorbitant amounts. And, you know, if you've got somebody coming in saying, I want $1,000 a month for you to have licensing to have live music, <laughs> the club's like, are you crazy? I don't, I don't even make that much profit, let alone having to pay the band. We're not going to have live music then. Um, it, then they will bully them uh, and, and if somebody's not um, savvy enough to say I'm not gonna pay that um, I, I'm willing to pay this it, it can be negotiated I've heard from a lot of club owners that they've been able to negotiate something that's a little fairer and you know nobody likes to pay it but if you have to pay something at least uh, it's at a, at a more fair amount than what they initially come into, okay? So it can be negotiated from what I understand. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, there's some, some club owners aren't savvy or, you know, they're intimidated. And so they just are like, you know what, I don't want to have to deal with that, especially when and then there's some club owners who have said, I ain't paying that, screw them. <laughs> and then they just ignore the letters and they ignore the phone calls and they ignore the warnings. And there's been a couple places that have actually been taken to court by these music licensing companies and you know they're saying to them pay up because we're the big guys with a lot of money we've got the big time lawyers and you will lose and we're gonna win and so you're just better off you know paying and that's why so many of the places just say I don't want to deal with it I'm not gonna have live music so that's just really sad because Gosh, back you remember back in the 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, that wasn't happening. Um, you know, there's a, so many artists from the past that that wouldn't even be where they're at today if they didn't have that opportunity to perform in a local business uh, where they were allowed to hone their craft and gain a following and be discovered. It's really sick. I mean, it's just just another one of those instances where just greed, greed, greed has taken over the world and. 
you know the business the music business the local the local artists so um, I really don't know what the answer is I don't know how to you know fix that um, anybody who's listening to this if you have any suggestions please share um, but that's just another thing that most uh, of the fans and the general public do not uh, realize that those clubs are having to pay those fees so that's why there's cover charges or why you need to you know patronize those clubs order dinner order some drinks and uh, help them to be able to get the money to have live entertainment want to support your local and regional entertainers all right next tipping tipping just so appreciated um, just as the servers in the restaurant appreciate a tip for giving you good service if an artist or a band has um, gone out of their way <clears throat> excuse me to help you perhaps celebrate a special occasion a birthday an anniversary uh, you've requested several songs a special song and and they've come through for you or they've made a big to do out of whatever your occasion is and made that night really special for you and the other guests that have come with you um, you know a, a tip is appreciated um, just like anybody else we really sincerely appreciate that you don't have to do it but it's appreciated I can remember back when I started going out to clubs you know, it was just a regular thing uh, and, and I think it varies city to city because I know down in Nashville when I was there like that was a big thing to you know just everybody just knew you, you go and put a five dollar bill in, in the in the tip jar and um, because the entertainment is not being paid much um, you know those tips really mean a lot and so if you are out and about and you enjoy the entertainment or somebody does something special for you um, you know put a couple bucks in a five sometimes even a ten <laughs> you're really lucky you get a twenty <laughs> we always laugh when somebody um, comes up and requests a song we say well if you write it on a twenty dollar bill we'll be sure to play it <laughs> just kidding all right anyway uh, that's all I've really got to talk about today. If you have any other suggestions um, or comments, questions that you have about the business, about bookings, uh, or just want to ask me any questions uh, about my um, career and things like that, feel free, put it in the comments, and we will have another Music Biz Martini time. Right now it's safe to drink since I'm all done talking. <laughs> mm.